Hi, and thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be programming the FreeWave Ethernet radio, the FGR2PE. And the assumptions we're going to start off with for the demonstration is that these are brand new radios and we've just taken them out of the box. The only thing we've done so far is powered up the radio and also attached a small antenna to each radio. To begin programming these radios, the first thing we're going to do is connect with an Ethernet cable from our laptop to the radio. And then once we're connected, we're going to change the IP address of our laptop to reside within the same range of the radio. So after plugging in, the computer has detected a local area connection. We'll go ahead and click on that and click properties go to Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4, highlight and then select properties, and we're going to set a static IP address for our laptop. Now the default IP address of an FGR2PE radio is 192.168.111.100. So we're going to change the IP address of our laptop to reside within the same range, but we would be one address lower at .99. So after I've selected that in the use the following IP address field, I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click close and then close. And now we should be ready to talk to the radio via Ethernet. In order to program the radio, we're going to be using FreeWave ToolSuite today. Once we open ToolSuite, we're going to create a new network by clicking Add Network at the top. For this demonstration, we'll just call the network name New Network. We click Next. The network type is going to be plus Ethernet. This is an Ethernet radio. And then we're going to click Finish. Now, in this network, we're essentially starting from scratch. There are no radios yet defined in this network. To configure the radio in the easiest method possible, we're going to be using the network design today. So after we've created the network, we then click Network Design. All right, the next window we're going to see is the radio type selection. So this radio is going to be the FGR2 Plus 900 megahertz Ethernet series. I'm going to select that from the dropdown and click Next. The network type that we're going to configure is point to multipoint. Even though we only have two radios, we might want to add radios in the future to this network. So we're going to create a multipoint network from the start. I click Next on that selection. All right, now the next screen is going to set the common parameters for the radio network. We're going to select Use Master Frequency Key for All Slaves. And we're going to define some of our IP addresses here, such as the the subnet mask, the default gateway, we'll leave those as they are for now. It's going to select a random frequency key for you, so at this time it's going to select a zero, that's fine. Packet sizes are 9 and 1, the RF data rate is 154, which is the higher speed. The master TX beacon is going to be 1, and the network ID that was randomly generated was 1964, although you could substitute your own network ID in there if you wish. After we've defined those parameters, we click Next. And the template name, we'll just keep the default name of New Master there. And I'll click Finish. And now, in our network design here, we have generated a new master radio. Now, in the software, a master is going to be defined as an M for master. Uh, but also in the world of Ethernet, with the FGR2PE, you'll see that labeled as a gateway. So the master and gateway, that terminology is going to be used interchangeably here. Now that we've created our master or gateway radio, uh, we're going to then apply those settings to our first radio to make that the gateway or master. And to do that, I hover over the icon that was created, I right click, and then I go to program settings. And the first option is to give the site a name. It's very important to name the radio. Uh, that way later, if you're looking at it remotely, you'll know where that radio physically resides. Typically, you want to use something that bears 
resemblance to the radio's physical location. Next, we're going to select the current IP address of the radio, which, as I mentioned previously here, is 192.168.111.100. Next, we're going to set the IP address that we want the radio to be after we're finished programming it. So I'm going to keep it in the same network range. We'll make it 192.168.111, and we'll go to 101 for the IP address. Next, I click Program. And it's currently writing the settings to the radio, so that should finish in just a second here. And now the progress screen has disappeared. We know that that master or gateway configuration file has been applied to this radio, so this radio is now good to go. Next, we're going to switch our Ethernet cable to be plugged into our second radio. Now in our network design template, we need to create a new endpoint to talk to this master or gateway. Uh, also, on the endpoint side, that's also known as a slave, and we'll be using that terminology interchangeably. Now to create a new endpoint in this network, we're going to hover over the master gateway radio, right click, then go to connect, and select slave, also known as an endpoint. Next we're going to see the menu appear, listing the radio's name, and also what type of radio it is. So we'll just leave that as the defaults for now, and I'll click add. Now in our network design, you'll see two radios. So now that we're physically plugged into our slave radio, or endpoint radio, we can now send the settings from FreeWave Tool Suite into that radio. And to do that, we use the same method. We hover over the icon for that radio, we right click, and then we go to Program Settings. The site name, we're going to call this the endpoints, and the IP address the current IP address is 192.168.111.100. That is the default IP address for all FGR2 PEs. Next, we're going to select the new IP address for the radio, which is going to be 192.168.111, and we'll go to 102 because we made the master gateway 101. After I fill that information in there, we're going to go ahead and click Program. And you'll see a progress message here. And after that message disappears, the radio should be programmed. Now, if we actually take a look at the LEDs on the radio here, we'll notice that we have a green CD light on our endpoints. And that green CD light tells us that the endpoint detects a carrier. So the CD stands for Carrier Detects. Now that the CD light is green, our endpoint radio sees the gateway, so they are now linked wirelessly here. Now the gateways LEDs, if you can see here, have not changed. It doesn't really matter what's occurring on the gateways lights, it really matters what the endpoint shows. And our green CD tells us it sees the gateway radio. The other light opposite that is the CTS, or clear to send. That tells us how well the radio is linked, how good the signal quality is. So the more solid the CTS light is, the better the signal condition for the radio. So looking at this, we have a solid red CTS, so this radio is good to go. So now that these radios are programmed and linked, let's go ahead and test them to see if we can pass some data over the air here. And to do that, I'll just go ahead and plug back into the gateway radio. And I will bring up a command prompt, and we'll go ahead and see if we can ping our first radio. Okay. Now, after executing that command there, we did receive four responses from the gateway radio. Uh, so we know we're able to talk over the Ethernet cable to the gateway radio. Next, let's try the IP address of 102, which is the IP address of the endpoint. So we'll go ahead and we'll now ping 102. And we're also getting uh, a response from that. We got four responses in a row. Uh, so using the ping command there, we can test the functionality here between the radios. We know we're able to ping the gateway over the Ethernet cable. We're also able to ping the endpoint radio wirelessly or over the air. With that test, uh, the programming of these two radios is now complete. 
and these radios are ready to be installed in the field. If for some reason uh, you received a software error while trying to program the radio, or you did not see the lights that you were expecting on the endpoint, we can go ahead and return the radio to factory defaults so it's new, just like we took it out of the box again. Now in order to do that, we're gonna connect to the radio with a serial cable, and here I have a USB to serial converter attached to the red cable that comes with the radio. I'm gonna plug the red cable into COM1 on the radio, and then after I'm plugged in there to COM1, in FreeWave Tool Suite, I'm gonna click Setup Terminal on the left-hand side, and I'm going to click Connect. After you click Connect, you then have to power cycle the radio. And this step is very important, or you will not see the menu. So after we've power cycled the radio, we'll just wait in the setup terminal for the menu to appear. And it usually takes around 20 seconds. Then as soon as you see a message appear in the terminal window, you're gonna press Y, and then it's gonna prompt you for a password. The password we're going to use is default, D-E-F-A-U-L-T, all lowercase, and then we're going to press enter. Now, the terminal may or may not give you an indicator that the radio has been factory defaulted. If you take a look at the lights on the radio, you will see the radio rebooting itself with the factory default settings. After you've, you've completed that for one radio, we can then plug into the other radio and perform the same action. Now I'm going to go ahead and power cycle that after I've connected. Now we're going to wait our 20, approximately 20 seconds here for boot time. I'm going to wait for that press Y message here. I press Y. We enter defaults again, all lowercase and we press enter. Now we have a pair of radios that have been returned to factory defaults as if you just took them out of the box. Uh, that is a really good point in troubleshooting. If for some reason you were unable to program, or the radios didn't link, you could perform that step on both radios and then go back to the beginning of the video and reprogram the radios again. If after doing this you still have problems programming the radios, contact us in technical support at FreeWave and we'd be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.